So who is this man, this, this Jesus of Nazareth? Who is he? Well, again, we now in Mark 8 get a second a feeding miracle where thousands of people are fed with meager provisions. The thing about this, the details are, are maybe a little bit different in terms of specific numbers, but it's essentially the same kind of event that happened. But why do we have this happening twice? See, uh, we're, we're supposed to see that even though these, these amazing miracles are happening, people are not getting the point of it. They're not really seeing these as symbolic displays of the one who fed Israel in the wilderness and the one who is the very bread of life. They're not getting it. And, and so right after this miracle, first the Pharisees are demanding a sign. You know, he, he's just recently done two of these uh, massive bread miracles, feeding thousands of people with, with almost nothing there. And they say, yeah, but we, we'd like a sign. Well, what kind of sign do you want? That we just had these, as well as all the miracles that are right in front of your eyes. But Jesus said this. He said, why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Of course, it, he's going to rise from the dead. That's going to be quite a sign. You know, he, he talks about that in another place. But here's what I want you to see. It wasn't just the scribes and Pharisees who didn't get Jesus. Even his own disciples don't get him. And here's how it's revealed. Again, it's connected to this, these bread miracles that we've seen. So, Because Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. You know, the Pharisees have their own leaven, that is in their teaching, their spiritual teaching. And Herod, whether he knows it or not, he's got his own leaven that has to do with the powers of this world. Uh, that's bad leaven, and that if you let that go within the disciples, you're gonna you're gonna destroy what will eventually be the church. He said, "Beware of this leaven." But they think he's talking about bread, as if Jesus has a problem with the fact that they have no bread. So they begin discussing among themselves. Oh, that's right, because we don't have bread. That must be why he's talking about leaven. Beware of the leaven. So Jesus says, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? See, and then he goes through the specifics of the miracles that have taken place where so many people have been fed. And he says, do you not yet understand? Like, I can do bread. Why? Because I am the bread of life. See, but they don't understand. So scribes and Pharisees don't understand, and they don't understand. And then we go on and we see him doing something, I think, symbolic here, very important. And he's he's healing a blind man. And what happens is that he does it in two stages. We know that he can heal in one stage. He doesn't need two stages. But what's this all about, that we have two stages? So again, we have him using spit. To do this, he, he, he spit on his eyes. And then he says to the man, as he, he lays hands on him, he says, do you see anything? And the man says, I see people, but they, they look like trees walking. So then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again. And he opened his eyes and his sight was restored. He, he saw everything clearly. So we think, well, what is this about? Well, listen, let's look at the rest of the chapter. I think we see what it's about because what happens is that Peter, right after this in Mark's gospel, we have Peter confessing that Jesus is the Christ. In some sense, he sees. He sees Jesus as the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, and he's commended for that. But then when Jesus tells him what the Christ is actually going to do, especially that he's going to be rejected and killed and, and that he's going to rise from the dead, which they don't understand about that. Peter, when he hears about this idea of the Messiah being killed, he thinks, no, no, he, he, he wants to, to say no to this. Uh, but uh, Jesus then turns to him after Peter's, Peter's rebuking Jesus of all things. Then Jesus rebukes Peter. Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. Strong words. Get behind me, Satan, for you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Yeah, Peter sees 
that Jesus is the Christ, but he needs another touch, as we all do. You know, touch me, Lord. Help me to see what I don't really see right now. And part of seeing what we don't need, well, what we have not yet really fully seen is realizing that we're called to suffering. And that's what he goes on to say, that if anybody comes after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. Why? Jesus is headed towards his death. So are we. We die daily, you know. Father, help us now to see this man, see this man, Jesus, for who he is, the Son of God, the Messiah, yes, the Savior of sinners, and the one who leads us in victorious suffering and resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.